Jay Inslee takes a hit on a carbon tax, and we talk with a state senator in Washington and a D.C. conservative about whether it's dead forever. This is The Climate Lead. I'm Evan Lehman, editor of Climate Wire. Hey, I'm Robin Bravender, deputy editor of Climate Wire. We've got energy reporter Ben Storo here to talk about the carbon tax in Washington state. The first thing I, I think that's important to say about the carbon tax in Washington is I sort of have taken to viewing it like health care to Massachusetts. Like, are we going to do this? If we're going to do this at a wider level, somebody's got to go first. And it probably has to be a state. I mean, we should point out that there is no other carbon tax in the United States, right? right. There's, there's cap and trade in California, and there's a limited cap and trade in the, the 10 Northeast. states in yeah. the Northeast under the Regional Greenhouse Gas Initiative. Um, but the, uh, currently, the only state that actually regulates transportation emissions is California through its cap and trade program, and Washington State would be the first if it were to do that. Washington State has been the state that seems most committed to trying something. They tried a revenue neutral approach. In 2016? In 2016. On the ballot? It, it split the Greens terribly and it died a wicked death. And so it came back this year at the legislature. It's hard to know, you know, it was a short legislative session. It's hard to know if with more time they could have gotten it through. But expectations were high. Expectations and Governor were, Inslee made this a big priority. Governor Inslee, like, if his state of the state speech was 45 minutes, 30 minutes of it were carbon tax. So it died last week. It became clear that they didn't have the votes. It became clear they didn't have the votes. And now it goes to the ballot. And it will go to the ballot again. Um, this is a $15 per ton carbon tax. Increase $2 a year until 2035. So Inslee could walk away with a victory anyway. He could, but then here's the other, here's the flip side to all of this. People care about climate change in Washington State. There's really no doubt about that. The question is, are they willing to pay? You know, um, and especially when you have to stack up climate next to a lot of other priorities. I mean, just people are going to have to pay for education in Washington State right now. Are they willing to also, you know, pay for a carbon tax? And pay for a global problem that even if Washington has a... Washington State has an amazingly, by national standards, their power sector is really, really clean. They have a lot of hydropower. So let's talk about the politics of this. If Inslee comes away with a victory from the ballot initiative, and he does run for president, he stands to be, you know, perhaps the only candidate who sees climate change as a central pillar of his campaign, right? Um, it's hard for me to imagine a campaign of Jay Inslee's that's not centered around climate change. Mm -hmm. And whether the country is ready for that or thinks that that's the top priority, you know, at a time when we're talking about nuclear war you know, with Russia <laughs> and, you know, and North Korea. I mean. We also called State Senator Reuven Carlisle of Washington. He sponsored the bill. He's a Democrat. Yeah, I'm still in the car, so I don't, don't sweat it. I was just on the phone with a colleague. We, uh, we are very close to a very big breakthrough on a 100% renewable energy bill. So uh, while the carbon tax hasn't gone through, we're super close to a, a Hawaii-like bill. The challenge for states like Washington that are committed to doing something about climate is really with transportation and trying to, to do something about that. Do you think that... A, that renewables have become a better political sell, and B, how do you get there on trying to tackle transportation emissions? Right. Well, you've identified the crux of the issue. We're the cleanest state in the nation. Our, our renewable base is, um, you know, off the charts, 60-some uh, percent when you add it, everything together. So it is very difficult, and 48% of our emissions come from the transportation sector. So it's easier politically, but it may not be quite as effective in terms of direct investments in the energy sector and the transportation sector. Yeah, and can you tell us, you know, what happened in Washington? Were you surprised at the outcome? Well, first of all, I'm incredibly proud of our work. We got further than 
any carbon tax has made at, made it out of any legislature in the country. And we think we broke the seal of uh, the political discourse in this state. And we've, uh, we think we've changed the conversation nationally as well. We made it to the Senate floor. We fell one or two votes short. And uh, we had the business community at the table, by and large. We had the environmental community. Uh, but we had a lot of tension on the, on the progressive side because there are a number of players who are very committed to going to the ballot and putting this on the ballot for a public initiative, which is a very strong part of our governance here in Washington state. The business community on the right and some of the uh, alliance of, uh, of the progressive community on the left made it, you know, made it a heavy lift to actually get the legislation through. I really appreciate yeah. it, your time today. Thank you. Yeah, it's in, it's in play. I'm just walking into a meeting right now to go over to the House side. Thank you. All right, thanks, everyone. All right. Your time. Thank you. So generous. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye. We had William Murray of the conservative R Street Institute in our studio today to talk about the prospects for a carbon tax nationally. There are different ways to do it. I think our position is carbon taxes are better than cap and trade. Uh, but some car not all carbon taxes are the same, and some are better than others. What do you think the lessons are uh, from Washington looking at both other states and nationally? And this is a very democratic, liberal state mm -hmm. um, with Democrats in control. So Washington State is slightly different in that it's a left-leaning state that doesn't have an income tax. You'd have to find other places for it to work better. <laughs> and I don't know exactly other places that have a fairly dynamic economy. That's it's a blue state like Washington where it'll work. It won't work in places like Illinois or places like New York that have um, more of a manufacturing base that uh, would feel targeted. If it doesn't happen in Washington, it probably can happen. But clearly, they were only a vote or two away in the in, this, in the in the in the legislature. So we'll have to see. Let me ask you something about R Street specifically. The, the argument for a long time was that carbon taxes have a chance during overall tax reform. You know, tax reform came and went, carbon tax didn't. Um, does that change the dynamics? Um, is, you know, is there at some point that R Street comes to the conclusion that a carbon tax is dead and isn't worth arguing for anymore? So I don't think it's dead. It depends on how long we expect to be working in this town. Um, you know, <laughs> mid-century perhaps for some of the younger of us. Um, it, uh, it's just like a lot of things. It's, it's a good idea, but how do you put it into place? And how do you, because both sides would have to sacrifice a lot. They'd have to sacrifice a, an important element of their belief systems in terms of what kind of society and what kind of federal government they want to, to have in the 21st century. So what's your argument to Republicans now? I mean, if it was tax reform beforehand, before tax reform came, came and went, all right, but now is, it's kind of changed a bit. It's almost like smaller government is important to them, uh, smaller federal tax base, more federalism. If so much is percolating down below, whether at the state level or at company levels, um, it may be in their best interest to consider, to consider a carbon tax. But I would be remiss if I say it's really a big issue right now with the Trump administration. So okay. it's, not, uh, it's not being pushed aggressively, and it won't be. Um, but I think the economics pencil out that this is a better system than nothing, uh, if you believe the science. That's it for the carbon tax episode. We've got our natural resources reporter, Brittany Patterson, in today to bid farewell as she heads to a promising career in radio. I'm heading to West Virginia Public Broadcasting. I'm going to be a radio reporter for their environment and energy team. Brittany, sign us off. So for more awesome environment and energy reporting, check out my stories and everybody else's at eenews.net, eenews.net.